Hi, this is Stu, and I'm going to give you a brief overview of how to write a screenplay in Slugline. So when you first launch the app, you get this little splash screen. You can choose from previously open screenplays and open one of those. You can open a screenplay somewhere else, or you can do what we're going to do, which is just start with a fresh one. When you start a new screenplay in Slugline, there are no buttons. There's no user interface really at all, other than that you're on page one and this little preview button down here. But none of that really matters right now because we're just going to start typing. Oftentimes the first thing in your screenplay is a scene header. And scene headers usually begin with something like INT period. And as soon as we type that and then press space, you'll notice that that INT became bold and capitalized. That's because in Slugline, you don't have to declare what kind of element you're about to type. You just start typing. So you can type EXT, and as soon as you hit space, Slugline knows that you're typing a scene heading. Press return, and now you're typing action. So far so good, but how do we make a character name? Well, I'm going to press return, and I'm going to type Belmont in all uppercase, and then I'm going to press return. Now, Slugline automatically assumes that a line entirely in uppercase may be a character name. And so it preemptively pushes it over there to say, that's what I think you're doing, and I'm going to help you out by getting you set up to start typing some dialogue. After I'm done with my dialogue, I can press return and start typing more action. But what if I type something in all uppercase that I don't want to be a character? If I press return after this uppercase line, Slugline helpfully says, oh, you must have a character named a massive wave, and maybe she is going to start talking now. If you don't like that, just press return again, and you can start typing action. Screenwriters love uppercase. It's easy to convert any text to uppercase. You can just right click on it and select it. Now I started typing a B on this next line, and Slugline suggested that maybe I might be typing Belmont's name again. If I hit return, it'll accept that suggestion, and I can start typing more dialogue. But that's not actually what I want to do. I can just keep typing action and continue writing the screenplay. All right. Pretty good, but you know, we should probably indicate that uh, Belmont isn't just talking to himself up here, so it's pretty common to add a parenthetical element after a character. There are a couple easy ways to do that. You can go right up to Belmont, you could press return, and then type an open paren, and type into radio, and as soon as you close the paren, Slugline will recognize that that's a proper parenthetical element and format it correctly. Another way you could do that is right after Belmont's name, just press tab and Slugline will automatically create a pair of parentheses for you. When you're done with that, you can press enter and it'll drop you down to the next line, but we don't need to do that. Now notice that since I did create an empty line in between the parenthetical element and the next line, what was previously Belmont's dialogue now became an action element. If anything like that ever happens to you, it's fine. Just delete the empty line and it's back to being dialogue. That's the important thing to remember is that Slugline is always actively parsing this text into a screenplay. So if you change something simple, it might have an effect on the formatting. For instance, if we go from ext to just ect period, this is no longer a scene heading. As soon as you put the T back, it's back. So we're off to a great start, but there's a couple of formatting things that we should probably do here. For instance, the name of the ship should probably be in italics. And we can do that in exactly the way we would with any other writing application. You can select it and right click on it and choose italic. Or I'll just undo that. You can also select it and press command I. You'll notice that these asterisks appear on either side of the text. It's actually those asterisks that are indicating to Slugline that this text should be italics. And they appear in light gray to show you that they won't print in the final screenplay. And this is as good a time as any to show you how you can view that final screenplay. So that's what this preview button here is for. As soon as we click that, you now get a view of what your screenplay will look like printed. And you'll see that that text is italicized, but the asterisks are gone.
click on the edit button to go back to editing your screenplay. Another common thing I've seen is people will use bold to indicate the first appearance of a character in the story. If you like doing that, it's easy to do it by just selecting bold or good old command B. And you can see that bold is indicated by two asterisks on either side. And another common formatting thing that we like to do a lot in screenplays is to underline things. So we can do that by, you guessed it, command U. And now we've got underlined text. And again, let's preview. And now we can see our italics, our bold, our properly formatted character, parenthetical, dialogue element, and even our underlining. What's so great about this is that it takes very little time to realize that all you need to do is type your screenplay. Just type the words as they come to you. Don't ever think about formatting. Just get the words down on the page. Slugline will do all the hard work for you because the truth is screenplays are pretty simple and the formatting is easy to guess. If Slugline ever gets the guessing wrong, there's easy ways to help it out. But for the most part, Slugline simply gets out of your way and lets you write.